Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, you guys, let's talk about some big money bolos. Items to be on the lookout for, items you can buy low and sell high. My name is Courtney. I am your featured seller, and I am going to tell you where I got the item, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. I pick these items up at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, YouTube uh, selling events or auctions, and Facebook Marketplace. Those are the main places that I source. So we're going to get started here, and I'm going to tell you about these bolo items. Um, the first one is awesome and it's just awesome. It's got a cute little story behind it. So we'll talk about that first. Let me get my screen share up here and we are ready to go. So these items, um, come from different places. As I said, I, be I can't remember where this one came from. It may have been a mystery box. So I went out to my garage and I dug through like some totes. You guys, I have a money pile, mountains and mountains of stuff that I need to list. Um, so this was either a garage store, garage sale, not a garage store, a garage sale or a mystery box. And this little guy was in a bag of stuff and I dropped the bag on the floor and I actually broke an item and somehow this little item was not hurt. Thank goodness, right? Because number one, it's darling. And number two, it sold for $75. Uh, the buyer was all in for $89.14. This is a Holt Howard, you guys. It's made in Japan. It's an elf figurine. It's MCM. It was not marked Holt Howard, but was able to look it up. Um, actually, I was listing this during a live show. And Rachel Strickland sent me an Instagram message showing me... Um, I think she used Google Lens or something to find it. And she found it and it was Holt Howard. And I was like, I think I know that brand. Like I knew it was familiar to me, but I don't think I've ever sold it before. But it had the Japan sticker. So I was excited just because of the Japan sticker. I typically will do um, tape measure in my photos to show the height and the width. Um, that's just what I do. It's much easier for me than writing everything in the description. So look at the cute little face. Super, super cute. And again, took about, or I'm sorry, this sold for full asking price and it sold really, really fast. So the next item, and Rachel Strickland has a YouTube channel, you guys. It is her name. She is a reseller, so go check her out. All right, this vintage Halloween articulated arched black cat. It is a die cut. And this one came from a thrift store and I sold it for $36. The buyer was all in for $46.44. So a lot of times these will be signed or marked with a brand. This one was not. Again, tape measure to show measurements. And this one is articulated, which means that it moves. So pretty cool little cat there. Wonder what it, if it would do anything under a black light. Huh. Maybe, maybe not. All right. The next item I sold, I picked this up at a garage sale for a buck and it did take a while to sell. I don't know if my keywords were really great or maybe my question marks and the title were scaring people off, but I ended up selling it for um, a best offer of 45. Super, super cool bracelet. It was marked EGE89. I don't know what EGE stands for. And the buyer with shipping and tax was all in for 53.21. This next item, I absolutely love it. And I actually feel like it should have sold for more because it's so cool. Um, it's a vintage empty Barden, B-A-R-D-N, drug pharmacy pill bottle. It is empty, you guys. But the coolest part, the doctor's name is Dr. Love. How cool is that? Um, and it's, I think it says 1954. So this is super, super old. I did wipe it down a little more before I shipped it because it was a little bit dirty. And when I took the picture, I just had listed it as I had gotten it. I got this in a dibble box. And a dibble box is a dibble bit of this and a dibble box. Little Ah, let me try again. A dibble bit of this and a dibble bit of that. And it's basically a reseller box, you guys. So this came out of, I think it was either $100 or $110. Um... I can't remember which dibble box this was in, but I do have unboxings on my channel if you want to check them out. Basically, what I do is I get the box, I unbox it, I list everything, show you guys how I listed it. So it's still educational. It's not just an unboxing. I tell you what I expect to make on the box. Um, 
I got this from Donatella Bottolino. Her uh, YouTube channel is her name. It is linked down below. If you're looking for inventory, her and Auctions for You have great reseller inventory. I buy from both of them. I've been buying from them for a couple of years. So um, it's a great way to source from the comfort of your couch. So check them out. And this item was long tail. It did take a while to sell. I had to find the person that was looking for this, but that Dr. Love is just so, so cool. So um, most of these items were cross posted to um, Mercari and Poshmark. Those are my other two main platforms. Um, if you're interested in seeing items that I sold on those platforms, I also uh, show those what sold videos. I separate them because some people don't really want to see them all mixed into one video. And I do hard goods on Poshmark and Mercari. So you can check out those videos as well. I use List Perfectly to cross post. It's an extension and I cross post in bulk. I have a video down below that shows you how I do it. It's so much quicker than manually doing it. It, um, If you want to try it after you watch the video, you can get 30% off your first month with coupon referral code Bolo Buddies, all one word. So these little plates I picked up at an estate sale for $6. Um, they're Pottery Barn. Anytime I see Pottery Barn, I usually look it up. It's a nice brand. It usually has a decent sell-through rate. And I ended up taking a best offer of $40 on these, and the buyer was all in for $58.25. I, if you guys watch me, you know I'm not much into breakables, but for something like this, I went ahead and picked it up. The next item is my husband's. He, I don't know where he got this. He just handed it to me and he's like, this has been sitting in my office. And I'm like, you should definitely list that. That is awesome. Um, it's vintage. It's from 1991. It's a Metallica brooch snake pin. Um, and he sold this for $50 on best offer. And the buyer was all in for $58.68. And he had like a buck or two in this. The next item is this sleeping Santa. Again, I have a video down here that shows how this guy works. He is super, super cool. And I sold this for $72. The buyer was all in for $102.93. This did sell in January after Christmas. Um, got this for $5 at a thrift store. The next item I sold is this putts house. Okay, so these are cardboard paper putts. They are made in Japan. Let me show you the marking on the bottom. This is what you're looking for. Uh, there are repops of these. You wanna make sure you have the old ones that are made in Japan and they will do pretty well. Um, some of them can go for crazy money. Uh, this one ended up selling for $43.20. The buyer was all in for $53.78 and I got this at an estate sale for a buck. The next item I sold is this Buyer's Choice Christmas Caroler. This came from my, when I was doing that live show, all that stuff that's been sitting in my garage. This sold for $62.50, uh, best offer. The buyer was all in for $78.20, and this came out of a Christmas mystery box from the thrift store. I could not find this exact one. It did have a little bit of damage, but um, overall, pretty cool item. Now, there are knockoffs of these, so if you see a caroler, that looks similar to this, make sure you look at the bottom and make sure it says buyer's choice. Those are the ones that are going to go for more money. The next item that sold is this hand carved Noah's Ark. And I picked this up at a thrift store for a couple bucks. I sold it on best offer for $40. The buyer was all in for $59.61. So I do feel like I could have gotten more for this, but a couple of the, this, see the little, I think it's a camel, his foot's broke. And there was another one that had a broken foot. So this offer came in really fast. So I just decided to take it because I didn't want to sit on it for a long time. Maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have waited. Let me know what you guys think on the Noah's Ark. The next item I sold is this vintage Santa. And a lot of these items are all from that same night when I pulled all of this stuff out of my garage. And they've just been selling like crazy. All of them after Christmas too. It's crazy. This is a gourd, you guys. Um, it's a dried out gourd that has been um, turned into a Santa. And I ended up selling this for a best offer of $40. And the buyer was all in for $55.63. And that came out of a Christmas mystery box. This one also came from Donatella Bottolino. Um, I talked about her earlier. This came in a mystery box that I purchased from her. And it was a $100 mystery box. 
I sold this item. And also, you guys, the black tag, do you see how it says Barbie? Look for that. Those items typically do well. So somebody bundled this and they bundled this item that I got in a mystery box from Auctions for You. So it's funny because they're auction partners. They go on each other's channels. They go back and forth and um, they partner up on YouTube and have selling events. And this person bought something from each box. Like one was from Donna and one was from T. So pretty cool. The buyer was all in for $69.30 for both of these items. And the total all in with tax shipping, taxes and shipping was $74.30. So um, this is a big money item. This is a bread and butter, but uh, look how cute these are, you guys. They flip. Huh? Isn't that fun? So I, I'm guessing somebody could probably put prescriptions in those. And then like a kid um, put their prescriptions and then they could have like sunglasses and glasses all in one. Huh. I probably could have like advertised that better. The next item is this vintage Germany 11 piece German porcelain miniature. Um, it's a spice set basically, you guys. And they've got little lids on them. Super, super cute. I got this at a thrift store for eight bucks. They did take a while to sell. Sold them for $45 on best offer. The buyer was all in for $60.50. The next item also came out of a mystery box. Um, I think it was in a Christmas mystery box, if I remember correctly, which doesn't really make any sense. Sometimes things get thrown in that aren't really uh, themed correctly. Uh, but this one sold best offer $44, and the buyer was all in for $64.28. It is a Vernon Ware tickled pink butter dish. It's an MCM mid-century modern piece. It's really cool. Let me show you what the bottom looks like here. Maybe I'll find it. Here we go. Right there. Pretty cool, right? Dishwasher and oven proof. Because everybody wants to put their butter in an oven, right? So there's the measurements. The next item I sold is this vintage Muppet Babies 1989 Castle. This came out of a mystery toy box that I purchased from Auctions for You. And I ended up selling this for $60 on best offer. The buyer was all in for $82.07. And this did have some missing pieces. It had some damage and it still sold for $60, you guys. If you can find this thing in mint condition, it had some fading. So the condition was, I would say, I don't want to say poor, um, but it wasn't in great condition and it still was a bolo. So these old toys and that, and I knew when I um, was getting this mystery box, she had gotten a um, storage unit full of vintage toys, but a lot of them were just loose and not very well taken care of, but I know the value of that stuff. So I was like, make me a box. And um, this was in the second box that I got from her. I'm not sure if she still has anything left from that unit or not. But um, I bought two boxes, $100 boxes, and the unboxings are on my channel. And they are so awesome because I didn't know what half the stuff was because they were old vintage toys, you know, loose toys that I had to use Google Lens for. So if you want to get an education, oh my goodness, I was so educated by doing those unboxings. So go check out those videos. You will definitely learn. If you don't, come back and let me know. I will be shocked because these were great boxes. And it also shows you that things do not have to be in mint condition to still flip for a nice profit. So I knew I was, I knew what I was getting with those boxes, that they were going to be a little bit dirty and a, some damage and stuff like that. But if you go look and see what I made on them, unbelievable, unbelievable. I'm still like, wow, I should have like bought like 10 boxes. Okay. These woodsies, they are, um, if you guys have heard of Calico Critters, I don't want to say these are the knockoff, um, but <sighs> Calico Critters are more sought after. This would be the Target brand from what I understand. They are very similar, but they do look different. They're kind of a flocked toy. Um, I will pick up Woodsies. I do prefer Calico Critters. They sell for more, but this had all of these little accessories and the Calico Critters are, um, you can find them vintage where these are newer. So I hope that makes sense. But I got these at a garage sale, you guys, for a buck, the whole set for a buck. And I sold it for $40 on best offer. And the buyer was all in for $56.54. The next item is this Joan Rivers brooch. And I picked this up because I just thought it was really cool. 
It was actually pretty heavy and really nice quality. It is marked Joan Rivers on the inside. This is what it looks like. And she has a Crystal Critters collection. So they're bugs. I also have a dragonfly listed that hasn't sold yet. But I got this at a thrift store for a buck and I sold it for $60. The buyer was all in for $69.49. The next item is this dollhouse set. It's a bedroom set. I got this at an estate sale. I did pay up a little for it. I paid $10 for it, but it was new old stock um, in the original box. I did put used because um, the box had been opened and I wasn't sure if maybe they set it out and then put it away. So I was just safe and put used. Um, I put marking pre-owned because I'm not sure. I just feel like it's sometimes better to be safe than have somebody complain. I ended up taking a best offer of 65 on this and the buyer was all in for 88.09. And again, that was an estate sale. Here is another Noah's Ark set. set. <laughs> um, I love picking up nativity set. I also like picking up Noah's Ark. I feel like there's always somebody looking for those things. They're collectible and... I think probably a lot of people put these maybe in kids' rooms or they give them to their kids to reenact um, the story. And I don't know, they're just really cute. But this one also may be handmade. Um, I sold this one for $69. The buyer was all in for $98.16. And I got that actually at the Goodwill for six bucks. The next item is this vintage signed Crown Trafari bamboo look hinged bracelet. All right, you guys, let me show you right here. Do you see the little crown on top of the T? That means that it is crown trifari and not just trifari. This is a vintage piece. Um, I got this at a th uh, garage sale. I'm sorry, garage sale for 50 cents. And I ended up taking a best offer of $65. And the buyer was all in for $76.43. The next item are these Dan, Dan Berry Mint war ponies. So I've got this one and this one, and I still have one left. Um, I believe I paid seven each, but I am not sure. I kind of bundled them. So they were at a garage sale and it was a great garage sale, but somebody offered me 144 for both and they were all in for $178 and 18 cents. And I did have the original boxes with these. I don't know if I showed it or not. Yeah. So here's the original box. And all the um, COA or COO certificate of ownership was also attached. It's usually COA. Um, this was a retail arbitrage when Sears was going out of business. I can't remember what I paid for it. It did take a long time to sell. I had to kind of wait on everybody else to sell theirs because the market was flooded because Sears was closing. I ended up selling this best offer of $70 and the buyer was all in for $81.65. The next item is this Calico Critters plush. I got this at a garage sale. I bought all of the plush at the garage sale. This one was a huge surprise. I looked it up. I couldn't find any comps. I actually listed this on my live working hangout. Um, if you are not subscribed to my uh, reseller testing Bolo products, definitely sub over there and come hang out when I do live shows. Super fun. Um, I list stuff that I have no clue about. I look up solds, show you guys how I comp items, and then I show you how I draft it. So um, the link is down below in the description. But this cat, you guys, if you watch the live show, you know I knew nothing about it. And I sold this for $90, you guys, $90 for a plush. My cost of goods was probably a dollar or less, maybe 50 cents, maybe a quarter. I got so many plush. It was like a bulk buy at this garage sale. They had so many plush and they were so good. Um, so super, super excited about this sale. Um, the buyer was all in for $101.60. The next item also came from that same lot, um, probably 50 cents less than a dollar in it, sold it for $49.99. The buyer was all in for $56.24. This is by Kurto Toy. And it's holding a guitar and the guitar is marked Martin, which is um, a guitar company. So it's a good advertising piece. And I probably could have got more for this. I probably should have done a buy it now or started my auction higher. The next item is this vintage made in Japan salt and pepper shaker. Um, and also it's got a little mustard condiment thing. So this opens up and holds mustard. 
And it was funny because during the live show, I was like, what, what does this hold? And we concluded that it's mustard. So salt, pepper, and mustard. I uh, took a best offer of $40 on this. The buyer was all in for $56.10 and I got that at an estate sale for $1. The next item is this vintage Boglins Schlurp toy. Um, I knew this was a bolo. I saw this at a garage sale and I could not pick it up fast enough. This guy's not in great condition. He's got some condition issues and some damage and I just disclosed it and showed it. Let me see if I can find it here for you. See um, right here, it's kind of, that's his arm. It's kind of pulling away. So. I think this went internationally, if I remember correctly. I want to say the person had zero feedback, which is fine. I'm fine selling to zero feedback. Um, it, it may have been somebody that saw my video because I posted a video over on my reseller testing Bolo products and I attached it. And I know I sold an other, another item from that. So I posted on YouTube with the title. So anybody that's searching this on YouTube can find my eBay store and then purchase the item. So this sold for $72. The buyer was all in for $79.05 and I got that at a garage sale for 50 cents. The next item are these Marks of Navarone playset soldiers. So let me tell you a little story about this. Um, I had these cross posted. I do cross post some items to like Grailed and Facebook and Etsy. And I had this cross posted to Facebook and I had several people inquire about them, but they all wanted to offer me lower prices. One person ins insisted that these were only worth a dollar to, or was it 50 cents to a dollar 50 a piece um, that I was way overpriced. And I'm like, that's fine. I understand. No problem. You can search elsewhere. I, I mean, people tell me that stuff all the time and I'm like, that's okay. You don't have to buy it. You know, um, I'm not going to change my price. Am I flexible with my pricing? Yeah, I'll take I'll look at a best offer, but I when people come to me and tell me what I should be selling my item for, I I don't want to say I get offended, but it's a little bit frustrating sometimes because I've done my research and I was willing to wait for the right buyer on these because I know that they're hard to find. And they do make these little characters, soldiers that are cheaper and not collectible that you can get really cheap. So I held strong and these ended up selling on eBay for $120 for 26 of them. So if I take, let's see, 120 divided by 26, I ended up selling these for $4.61 a piece. So the person that was messaging me obviously was misinformed or did not know the market on this item. So just I guess my point in telling you this is if you feel strongly about something, it's okay to keep your price where it's at. Um, the right buyer will come along. And if they don't, then you're going to know you're too high. So the next item I sold is this vintage Boyd's Coddington hot rod car. You guys, I did not sell it for 400. Um, I did run a 30% off sale for a while. So it was in the 300 range. I was hoping to get 350, 325 for this. Somebody offered me $288 and 25 cents. And you guys, I could not pass it up. Um, I got it at a garage sale. I think it was a buck. It was kind of one of those things where I bundled a bunch of stuff. The buyer was all in for $324 and 86 cents. And in the feedback, they put fair price, which I completely know that I undersold this. And if you go and watch my is worth point worth it on this channel, I tell you the whole story. And I got worth point because of this item. And I'm so glad I did. Is worth point worth it? Yes, 100%. Um, I was originally going to sell this item um, auction style starting at 150. And there's a good chance it would have went for 150. So already paid for most of my subscription with this one item. And I have other examples in that video that tell you why worth points worth it. I do have a link, a referral link down below. If you guys use that to um, join worth point, that would be amazing. I'd appreciate you so much for doing that. And um, if you want to know about the price guide and the different things that they offer, uh, that is also in that video. So definitely go and check that out. All right, you guys, this one was another one that was just, I'm super happy about it. I think I got this at a garage sale. It was sitting in my garage, you guys, just hanging out in my garage in my money pile. And I pulled it out. And I, I want to say I paid like a buck for it, but I'm not 100% sure. 
and it it moves. It uh, you turn the key. It's a wind up, and it like pats its face. From what I understand, somebody messaged me asking if it had the mirror. So I'm guessing right here in this little hole in the hand, there was probably a mirror that went with it. So it was still incomplete. I did an auction on this. I had multiple offers and I was like, nope, 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 nope. Like, I know this item's cool. I can't find any others like it. I'm holding out. Nobody bought it. So what did I do? I put it on, a, I increased my price, put it on a buy it now with best offer. And it sold within a few days for $108 plus shipping. So again, you guys, I do kind of price my items a little bit high um, so that I can take offers and um, send price drops and stuff like that. So that is how I do things. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments about these Bolo items. Um, Leave me an emoji of an owl if you made it this far. And again, a lot of the links that I referenced are down in the description of the video. So be sure to check those out. And let's talk about this little necklace. This is going to be listed in my eBay store. Um, I am unboxing 344 pounds of jewelry. Uh, I started this two years ago and I got burnt out and I stopped unboxing the jewelry. I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm just, I, I just stopped. So I'm kind of like in the mood to un unbox the jewelry again. So I've been working on it and I've been sitting things to the side and I'm like, I'm going to throw on a necklace for each video and then I'm going to list it in my store. This is just plastic, you guys. It's just a plastic necklace, but the black and white is super, super cute. So I'm going to get it listed. I wore this one in the other video. If you guys were at my live unboxing, um, I had one of them on my reseller testing Bolo products and the other one on my sourcing with Bolo Buddies channel. Those are both linked down below. I do. Um, I think I'm going to do the jewelry unboxings on my sourcing channel, but I don't know. I might mix it up. So make sure you subscribe to both. Um, if you're interested in this necklace, it should be in my store soon. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next one.